one of the standard jokes is uh, of, oh yeah the sea charles was good but there was a nasty wine from the bridge uh, well, that'll, be, that'll be the captain <laughs> I remember, Will, when we were first talking about a boat, and I don't remember what the word was. There was something. We, I, I was like, well, what's a... A seacock. Right, what's a seacock? <laughs> and I was like, it's that's a, probably going to be it's used It's the worst time. word ever, isn't it? <laughs> it's a lovely word. <laughs> we got to learn sailor jokes, Will. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know what to laugh at. With six years as a travel family, we have come to a few realizations. If you worry about every little thing that can go wrong, you'll never do anything that you can reflect on later in life and say, holy cow, look what we did. And for us, that is the ultimate wrong. But there are times, however, that you do have to question what can go wrong. These are the moments where you're dumping more money in 30 seconds than you make in an entire year. We learned this the hard way when we bought our first RV from people whom we only knew from Facebook and did no formal inspection. As fate should have it, the thing wound up having more issues than we could count. We named her Lemon for the month that we had her. And then we quickly bought our next one from a dealer who had a good reputation. And we named that one Lemonade. The moral is, it's okay to make mistakes, but learn your lesson. In this case, as we are in the process of buying a boat, which is valued significantly higher than Lemonade, we are going to do our best to not repeat mistakes of the past so that we can have a future of a lifetime. Join us as we go through the boat survey process and hopefully arrive at a final decision to buy our first boat. Today's a big day. We're not just going to look at the boat today. We're actually going to do the survey, which means we're making this. That means we're trusting our souls into a random person that we found on Facebook. <laughs> did we, we make that mistake which, already? <laughs> nothing good happens when you say, well, I trusted Facebook but we found a guy who's going to help us with the survey who's going to do the survey for us from a recommendation we vetted him we think to the extent that we can vet someone based on facebook but he's going to basically tell us whether this boat that we're going to go see is is worth the money or not but here's the thing what i have a pit in my stomach because right now between traveling from the north and to the south twice now and then paying for the survey if he says don't buy this boat it's a piece of crap we're what five grand in the hole at this point yeah but we still have the, the boat money how many times have we actually gone through life and saying that we shouldn't be doing something but we do it anyway every day okay so <laughs> there you go how many of those do we regret uh none none <laughs> okay so to go to the survey we had to rent another car and travel from our airbnb stay in rouen which happens to be in a vintage houseboat, and are making our way south to where the boat is currently sitting. We're going to be so happy when all of this driving is over. And just like that, our family does not miss a step when it comes to breakfast. We've got a whole bag of pano chocolate and croissants. Really? Here you go. Well, you can't eat the whole bag. And I think Alan's already put away half a baguette back there, right? Yep, I ate it all. And Will, how about you? All the, all the nutritional things that we've gained while being in Japan are being thrown away now, <laughs> now that we're in France. We always have a tendency to like put on like 20 pounds because of all the croissants and pano chocolates here. Listen, when in Rome, we, we need the full cultural experience and we're not going to pass that up. So welcome to what is our new home right here. No, not 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 the rental car right there. That she she's actually really good too. But uh, <laughs> we've driven a lot going up and south and north and backwards and forwards. And anyway, um, behind us, Broad Blue 38. This is our catamaran that is going to well, it's not ours. It's being surveyed right now. And this survey is going to take on two days. It's going to be sort of a dry day and sort of a dry morning. So right now it's been out of the water for two days essentially um and they're just doing all their inspections to make sure that everything's okay out of the water and then tomorrow afternoon take her in the water for a sea trial when we said earlier that we found our surveyor keith willis who is based in portugal on facebook we weren't kidding we put out the question for referrals and his name came up on top he arrived just before us and he got straight to work for the two-day inspection but you're gonna help us take care of this thing right you get, First impression is very good. If you tell oh, us right now good. that she's good to buy, then we'll just pay your money and we're done. <laughs> We've already paid. You've already paid. Oh, <laughs> I'm off. <laughs> so, I'm just 
We've taken reference measurements of the hull above the waterline, which is dry. Okay. Well, I'd assume it would be dry. And then take reference measurements, compare the underwater to that above the waterline. And you're checking for moisture, right? Yeah. Make sure they're consistent? Exactly. Now, normally, you would expect the below the waterline to be marginally higher, but not excessively so. Uh, we've been out of the water for two and a half days, so I would expect it to be dry. Anywhere where there's a penetration through the hull, this, this uh, rudder stock, there's a risk that uh, there could be a crack or anything. Uh, so we're testing that area. It's slightly higher, but it's not exposed to the sun that area, so it's not off the scale. So if I put it on my skin, for example, whoa, you're leaking. <laughs> I am actually. If I had any intelligence, I would use the other side of the boat first. But I'm going for the burn. Now, knowing that this was an almost 20 year old boat, nothing is perfect, but there were things that were found which needed looking into. Yeah, there we go. We've just got an elevated area. Oh, it's actually doing well on my finger. Underneath the galley, which could mean there's water in the bilges, but it's you know significantly higher. So we'll investigate further inside. Okay. Is that generally, is, I mean, where there's smoke, there's fire normally, or is it? Not necessarily, because like, there's no blistering at all. And there's two slightly elevated areas after the sail drive, to, between the sail drive and the skeg. So that's in the little engine compartments. So we'll look at those inside as well, but there's no blistering. But then Keith almost sent us into a panic when he broke out the hammer. We wondered, what on earth is he doing? Until he explained it to us. You want to identify any areas that are dead. Whereas you do a, a tap and you get no bounce. So if it's uh, the structure's become spongy or uh, water sodden, you go like that, it goes doof. And you get a little, little bounce back. But I just saw sort of at the balance point of the hammer. So it's bouncing back on its own. Quite annoying for the occupants, but there you go. Have you surveyed things where you've got, oh my god, this is all sponge? Um, there's always going to be something to surprise you. Yeah. <laughs> and the day you decide not to bother to go through all your tests, is the day you get sued. Yeah. You miss yeah. something. Yeah. You can't assume. How long have you been doing this? Uh, 17 years. Oh my gosh. And before that, I was doing boat repairs. Oh my gosh, you have to come on the crossing with us. And before we'll that. We'll make it worth your while, I promise. That doing delivery. Did you say you had a girlfriend? Yeah. She can come too. I'm trying, though, I'm trying. <laughs> I'll find his weakness by the end of tomorrow. <laughs> Eventually, the day came to an end, and it was time to recap. So, you, so basically, so far, so good. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So far. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, we've got two distinct areas of higher moisture. Uh, both engine compartments where the cell drives are and one underneath the galley. Okay. Whether or not we can access them is another matter. The engine compartment is actually pretty accessible. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. under the galley, yeah. then right. maybe not so much. Right. As we entered into day two of the survey, things started to get real. We knew that the boat had the initial thumbs up, but there was more work to be done. The inspections included the engine, the rigging, forward compartments, and much more. Look at all the fittings around the base of uh, cleats, stanchions, for signs of any stress cracking okay. in the GRP, and you know straightness of uh, the stanchions. And looking around all the hatches, if the boat's overflexed yep. through bad weather, you can quite often see hairline cracks in the GRP around these openings. Being that we are brand new to sailing, all that could be done was watch and soak in as much as possible. But like learning a new language, there is only so much you can take in before you start getting brain fatigue. This is obviously the catch. I'm just looking here going, you guys know twice as much as I do and you know like 20 times more than I do. Oh yeah, well, so. he's been back all his life. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that pretty much does the inside, at least on the dry, on the hard, whatever you want to call it, part of the inspection. 
and we're ready to get this thing back in the water. This is going to be so cool watching our little new home, maybe, hopefully, um, get dragged back in, pulled back in, uh, lifted in. Back. Can you imagine being dragged in? I don't think I want to buy her after that. Yet again, another new experience for us with boat life. Apparently this is how they do it. I don't know what this thing is called, but at some point I will know the technical name for it. This big box-like thing drives in over the boat and then they put these straps down there underneath the boat and lift it up and then maneuver it into the water. This thing is totally massive and I'm impressed. It's amazing how strong these boats are. I would not, I would think a strap like that would crack it, but I guess I wouldn't want to be in the water if a strap would crack it like that, right? Now in the water, we're taking a first spin, and I'm realizing we have a lot to learn because it's like listening to another foreign language when he's talking about all the gadgets there. <laughs> but we can learn, like you say, well, if any someone else can learn it, we can learn it too. So well, it feels this. nice motoring. I mean, I know the point is to sail, but the motoring feels quite smooth. No seasickness yet, though. Oh no! Gosh, I hope <laughs> I didn't get it. If I got it now, we'd be in real big trouble with my. Uh, some really good tablets on out, and they're on board. Oh, you have tablets? And they've they tried this. I've tried it. Tried I've tried things. it, but I the tried it in really, really bad yeah, seas, so it didn't really the work. The wristbands are good. If you put them on the night four, so if you put them on before you're going to sail, and it gives you pressure okay, points. Okay, and the pressure points. To, yeah, I have a yeah. couple of those. Yeah, quite And good. I mean, I'll, I'll try whatever I, you know I can try. I've tried ginger. Ginger's too mild for me. I need yeah. something stronger. Yeah. Vodka. Vodka. <laughs> yeah. While we're in the water for the sea trial, the goal was to make sure that the engines, gauges, sails were in good condition, hunt down unfamiliar noises, test the anchor, and the list continues. All the while, the sailors were walking us through the basic things that we should know as sailors. So what you do is you lift the end, it's just a little oh, okay. um, drop over, and you push it back through. We could tell just based on this going through the motions, this experience that we are about to undertake as we hope to become boat owners will change our family's life for the best. But one of the things that is most important to us is how we feel on board the boat. After all, if we are not comfortable, then this life will never work. So we're now been out here for our test sail and no one's been inside during the sail. Listen, that's the most important part. That's the reason why we're getting a catamaran is to see how we can live underneath the I'm not going in there. I plan, I'm probably going to be living out here. Might as well get a rowboat for that. <laughs> it's crazy. I think we should. I think we should. Hold on a second. I got to get myself here a little bit wide. Avalon, you're the only yeah. one daring to go inside during the sail. Daring to go where no one else has gone before. How's it feel? Fine. If you had to go ahead and do school while we were sailing in this middle of rock, would you be okay? Yeah, it doesn't even feel like it's rocky. Nice. Can you can you picture yourself right here with like a laptop? Yes. And just running ourselves and I'm our lives. I'm wondering why you can't see it too. Listen, I'm just right now more scared about our bank account going down to zero. Oh my god. <laughs> it felt amazing to be sailing on Friendship, even though it was a windy day in the Med. The boat sailed so smoothly. Maybe it was the excitement of sailing on our potential new home for the first time, but we were super grateful that we had our surveyor on board with us to catch the things we would never have known to look for. Right, I'm going. I did it enough off Olivia Rose for all those yeah. kids. Are you not doing the back rope? Because I want the back rope on. Smooth as butter. You know they make this look easy. They've left us alone on the boat. 
Thank God we have Keith with us still. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're at the dock, but I'm still nervous. When we got back, we took a look at the steering compartment to see if there was any water intake during the sail. While underneath, we hunted down why we were finding elevated moisture readings the day before. On the port side. Okay. And there's a what they call rudder tie bar. And what are you checking in here? Just where the rudders go through the bottom of the hull. Okay. You see this tube going yep. down through yep. there. Had she grounded or hit anything? Yeah then you'd be looking for cracks around the base where it joins the hull. Ah, okay. um, and if you remember yesterday where we saw higher moisture levels yep. in this area directly yes. below us, the deck shower, every time you're taking the shower, yep. it was leaking. So yesterday... It doesn't does leak, thing. It, it's when you're holding it up in the air. It's running back down, down the tube. It runs down the tube, you see, so right. over a season, mm. It's built up, you know, okay. a, a gallon or so in there. Do you know so what I mean? So once a, a year, if in winter, you just mop it or yeah, in winter, you just get a, well, just lean in, sponge, sponge it out, okay. and you, that'd be just part of your once okay. a year. Just make sure there's no water in there before the winter. Can you feel it around the around the? No, no, no. no. You it's can't. Possible because it's on a, it's a, it goes in. Ah, uh, it goes tip, in. That's in and out. Okay, mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, yeah. I see. it's just one of the things you like okay. to do once a year, at the end of the season. Okay. Yeah. So um, you should anyway. You should go in there and inspect it anyway. Yeah. I think I might put Will in there some yeah. nights. <laughs> or Largo, he's he's or Largo. Uh, yeah. Um, love it. So, okay, so that's why you were getting the moisture reading here. Yeah. Higher along the centre line. Okay. Because that water from yep. the shower was tracking down the hose and just dripping into this. But did you see any in there? No, I no, did it yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah, I took it out yesterday. So, so Lester, how much water was in there? Like this much or something? About this much. Okay. Yeah, it's so about a gallon or so. Okay. Yeah. And you, that one was last time you cleaned that. <laughs> When was the last time you, you emptied that out? Yesterday. No, before that. Last year. Okay, yeah. okay, so it's not yeah. that much. Yeah. Obviously, okay. if you, if yeah. the more you're showering. Yeah, but we use it all yeah. the time. Bear in mind, we shower all the time out there. Oh, right. Will plans yeah. on that, him yeah. being his yeah. shower. But the thing is, if you stood up and you're doing it, yeah. it's different to if you're sitting on the steps and doing it, because I don't think you'll get it if you're sitting there, because okay. I stand up. Yeah, it'll track. Yeah, yeah. Okay. but that's what it is. Okay. So if you do a moisture reading now, does it show nothing? Uh, it would read very high because we're in the water. Oh, I forgot we're in the water. <laughs> Shit. I guess you're not going to do that right now. <laughs> I can't hold my breath that long. I really am not that dense. I know we're in, we're in the water. Largo, it's time for the dinghy. Dinghy time? Okay, dinghy time, dinghy. so Largo has declared himself master of the dinghy. He's not going to be master of the vessel. Well, maybe if he takes a lesson, he might. But at this point, he's excited about one thing and one thing only on this thing, besides having his own room. And that is having his own boat. And in this case, it's the dinghy. Largo! Where'd my shoes go? Oh. Now, does the dinghy get a name? Dinghy. Dinghy. <laughs> Largo and I want to call it the... Um... You left the name. She's never had a name, so... Right, jump in there. Yeah. All right, we'll see you guys in a few weeks. <laughs> was the dinghy everything you thought it was going to be, Walco? Everything. And then some? And then some, except for Avalon. Except for Avalon? She's not gonna go in the dinghy with you, is that the plan? Yeah. So with that, we had to finally make a decision to move forward with the sale. We had one last consultation with Keith, our surveyor. All right, so here's the real question. Are we doing the right thing? If this <laughs> model of boat is what you want, this size of boat is what you want, at this price, you will not beat it. Right, and we're super backlit, but that's okay. Yeah, backlit. yeah I can tell. All right, either way, we got the point. <laughs> yeah, so it'd be almost impossible to find a boat of that age in that condition at that price. Yes! <laughs> I like the boat, I'd like to own it. <laughs> so, well, the offer still stands for that crossing, Keith. Uh, no, you're okay. You can bring your lady. I'm busy that week. We'll take good care of you. <laughs> But before we could proceed, we needed to ensure that our documentation agent, Ocean Skies, was prepared to get the process started. And, yep. and we just had the survey done just today, and we'd, like, okay. and we'd like to move forward with it, and we'd like to help, we'd like to engage you guys to help us with the documentation process. Okay, um, if I get you to drop me an email 
Are you able to do that at the moment? Yeah, uh, we can do it in the next uh, 10 minutes. Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, I'll give you my email and that way you can send me one and I'll just tell you all the things that I'll need so I can fill in that bill of sale and get it back to you in the next probably half an hour. Okay, perfect. So, so we want the boat. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Um, is Lester here? Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, so, um, and on the agreed upon amount, 120,000 pounds, okay. correct? Yep. The only two things is, can you fix the leak in the bathroom? I think he said you can oh, do yeah, that yeah, pretty yeah. easy. So we, we um, have this company that's going to do all the purchase sale agreements all right, okay. and then do the, the, the title changeover and, yeah. and everything. We just going. called them okay. now and said, can you do it now? So I'll get um, a transcript and then if you guys want to sign the bill of sale, execute that, then I can um, draft you some documents that you just need to sign and scan back to me uh, just for the registration process. Well, I meant to ask you, do you want to change the name of her or do you want to keep that name? <laughs> 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 that's a tough well, that's business. a tough question uh, Clarice think, because listen. three of the four family members do not want to change the name but Will wants to brand her to our listen, company I think I think I so think, it, I, think she, I think we're still discussing it I think I think friendship okay. has a good name she has a good history right I, I think we're gonna keep her as is are we yeah it's, it's, it's a good we're thing. gonna keep it we're gonna keep it yay <laughs> all right okay we're okay, gonna so sign we'll that now and we'll get so it back I'll, to you um, I'll draft those things for you now and I'll order the transcript okay all right you ready <laughs> let's go we got a long drive thanks guys all right bye cool. bye all right, all right. See you. we'll see you soon oh, see, see if you're walking yeah. out with us yeah. awesome bye guys thank you all right here's to the next adventure we're in a With that, we are now boat owners, or at least in the process of becoming one. Over the next couple of days, we'll have to transfer the rest of the cash and prepare for our move. This is super exciting. So subscribe now to see our new life begin. We can't wait to see you in the next episode. Margo, <laughs> how was the ride in the dinghy? Everything you imagined? Avalon's dead. Avalon's dead. No, she's right here. She's alive. No. No more squirting, Margo. Look, I have a camera. No more squirting.